So today's topic is section 9.3, universal enveloping enveloping algebra. So our goal was to find an irreducible representation of a semi-simple Lie algebra uh, with highest weight mu. But to do that, we first need to uh, develop this theory, <coughs> universal enveloping algebra. So what is that? So the goal here, uh, given a Lie algebra, we want to embed G uh, into an associative algebra, associative algebra A, uh, such so that <coughs> this bracket can be written as this usual or our favorite uh, formula. So, of, because x, y, there are uh, elements here and embedded inside this algebra, so this is really a multiplication in A. So A is a algebra, uh, algebra so we can multiply them. So we multiply, we can add, uh, subtract them, so it is a div element in A. So we want a situation like that. But notice that if already G is a subalgebra of MN, where we think of this as the uh, general linear algebra, we already have, have this, because that's just the definition in the, as a subset of a subalgebra. But, but actually, it's not the only condition that we need, we will add more conditions, but basically something like that. And there, are, there can be many, uh, many uh, such embeddings. Uh, like this, satisfying this. For example, uh, let's consider this simple example, SL2. And we know that we have this irreducible, the unique irreducible representation of SL2C on the vector space Vm, say. And then this is going to be of dimension m plus 1. Of course, m greater than or equal to 1, let's say. And we can embed uh, G inside this m n plus 1 m plus 1 matrix uh, algebra of m plus 1 uh, by this uh, x uh, like that. Because this acts on this, that means so this is really endomorphism of Vm, right? Because the dimension is m plus 1. We can think of this as the matrix or linear transformations. And <coughs> this uh, is an embedding clearly because we have this property. This gets sent to uh, y, but because this is a, a representation, it is an algebra homomorphism like that. So, But here, this is now really endomorphism here, and the bracket in this linear, mm, general linear algebra, this is defined to be just this. So it does satisfy uh, this. But we have to check, in fact, this is embedding. Um, this is an embedding. Embedding means so an injective map. So, i.e., injective. 
why uh, this will be uh, one of the homework problems so you will prove that this is an embedding so this map is an iso uh, injective map So there can be actually many poss possibilities to embed this into some uh, associative algebra. But we just don't want any kind of um, embedding, but we want to have uh, uh, something that uh, is maximal in some sense. So let me now define uh, the universal enveloping algebra using this theorem. So, theorem says that for any uh, Lie algebra G, there exists an associative algebra denoted U of G uh, with identity, identity uh, for the multiplication, like a one, and together with a linear map I U G such that the following three conditions hold. So for all X Y in G we want to have this it's just a small X Y equals i x i y minus i y i x. So if you identify or this is exactly the um, structure that we want, it, right? We want to have bracket uh, computed in this way. And second, uh, this algebra, this is generated by generated by uh, the images of the elements from G. So when I say some algebra is generated by some subset, that means this is the smallest subalgebra containing this set. So in other words, i.e., UG is, this is a general uh, definition. Generated by something means the smallest subalgebra containing that set. This is the smallest subalgebra of U of G containing uh, this set, meaning this set. Okay. That's. In this case, we say that this is generated by this subset. Third, if A is an associative algebra with identity satisfying the two conditions with identity and this, we have a map. This is a linear map. such that we have the, the first condition, Jx, the same as the uh, first one. For, of course, x, y in G. Then, there exists a unique algebra homomorphism, uh, say phi from U, G to this algebra, a such that it's an algebra homomorphism sending identity to the identity and uh, phi of i x equals j x for all x in G. So usually this situation is uh, expressed in terms of commuting diagram. So we have a map like that. G I sends G uh, is a map from G to U G, and suppose that we have a map another algebra, associative algebra A, and we have a map J satisfying this uh, desired condition. That then there exists a unique 
unique map, there exists a unique map phi, so that this diagram commutes. That's what this uh, third condition says. So in this case, if we say that u of g, uh, of, of course together with the map i, this is called a universal enveloping enveloping algebra of G. So this is a definition. So the theorem says there exists a universal enveloping algebra of any Lie algebra. Okay, quite uh, long <laughs> a theorem, right? But if you look at each uh, condition caref um, carefully, it's not that bad because first one is the one that we wanted. We want this bracket to be like a commutate, commutate thing, thing. And second means um, we don't we don't need anything else uh, other than that those coming from this. In some sense, these are like uh, in some sense smallest containing G. And third, this is maximum possible satisfying these two. Whenever we have uh, another, another one, we get this map. And because this commutes, in fact, this turns out to be a quotient of this. That means this is the biggest one. Uh, I'm going to explain this in more details. Uh, but by the way, a uh, fact, or exercise one, this is a homework. In fact, the universal enveloping algebra is unique in this sense. Uh, any two universal enveloping algebra, algebras of G are canonically isomorphic. There is a canonical isomorphism. You can use this kind of diagram, and then you can show that they have to be isomorphic. All right? So there is, in fact, unique universal enveloping algebra of isomorphism. Uh, OK, let me explain a little more about what I said. This condition, note 3, this means that uh, u of g, this is max, this is the maximal, this is a maximal algebra satisfying 1 and 2. So to see this, suppose, suppose that uh, associative algebra A satisfies 1 and 2. Okay? Then by three, uh, there exists a map where th this diagram commutes, right? There exists a map where the, this diagram commutes. And, and by two, A is generated by Jx, which is Jx is like this, right? A is generated by this, but these are all in the image of pi. That means pi must be surjective, right? Because it contains all the generators. So it's surjective, and then, and this is an algebra homomorphism. When we have an algebra homomorphism, if this is surjective, there's an isomorphism theorem. A is isomorphic to U G uh, divided quotient by the kernel. So A is a quotient of this. So in this sense, we can say that this is maximum pos maximal possible. Everything is kind of contained as a quotient.
All right. Uh, let's see. Before we prove, before we prove this theorem, let's look at a very simple example. A uh, simplest example of a Lie algebra would be Lie algebra of dimension one. Be a dimension one, dimension one Lie algebra. So with only one, we have a basis element. Let's say x. So it's generated by x. Or dimension is one. This is a basis. Then of course for all elements y is z. We have bracket always zero. We know that for one dimensional Lie algebra, it's commutative always. Because x is a, y is a scalar multiple of x, z is a scalar multiple of x, x bracket x is zero. So, for any uh, associative algebra A, generated by uh, one element, say, an element, say, x, and with a map, we can define uh, just send this basis element to this. And, of course, extend it linearly. This uh, satisfies this pair a comma i. This is by first condition and the second condition. Because what about the first one? Uh, i of x comma okay y comma z uh, is what? It is zero, right? Because the inside is zero. But you know, it's really ax and by, uh, bx, because x is the generator. Uh, it should be zero. <laughs> how can I how can I explain this? Um, okay. We want this to be uh, AX. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, no, no. Yeah. Because this is zero, right? This is zero. So we, we want to know whether this is zero. But uh, we, we want to know that they are equal. But this is zero, this is zero, so they are equal. Is that okay? Because here, what is that? This is really uh, AX, BX minus BX, AX. A, B, they are just constants, so zero. So it satisfies one and two, so we always get one and two, if you have a generator. By the way, a two means it is generated by X, and we just selected A to be an associative algebra generated by one element, so one and two, they are just true. But to satisfy three, uh, for three, uh, we, we must have uh, no relation for x, for this, uh, because if you have a relation, we cannot, we cannot get uh, three. We cannot have property three. That means this is Algebra generated by one element with no relation that is exactly the same as the polynomial ring or polynomial algebra. For, for there, there is no relation for this means for any polynomial, this is not zero. If it's zero, then you cannot have, uh, for instance, this as a quotient of Cx. Does this make sense? Is everything OK? It's a polynomial algebra with one variable. OK, so how can we prove the theorem? 
we will in fact construct uh, such an algebra U. It's a constructive proof. So the construction of U, UG. To construct this, we will first con consider the tensor algebra. So for, to, to review that, for vector spaces uh, U, V, W, we have You know, this tensor is associative. The tensor, this is associative. Mm. And the tensor algebra denoted by uh, T of V for a vector space V, we define this algebra, tensor algebra of a vector space V is uh, defined by the following formula. This just, as a vector space, it's just a direct sum of uh, tensors. What does that mean? So V tensor 0, that means we don't tensor anything. And uh, by convention, that is just a, a base field we are working on, or working with. So it's C in this case. Tensor, so V tensor 1, we have only one thing, and then we have two V tensor V plus, all, they're all direct sums, etc. So it's an infinite direct sum like that. So as a vector space is defined like that, so it's an infinite dimensional vector space, even though V is finite dimensional. And this direct sum means uh, every element in the tensor algebra is a finite sum of this form, uh, like this. So a k u k k from 0 to n. It has to finish at some point, where, of course, a k, they are uh, scalar, u k, uh, v tensor k. So typical element. Uh, Typical element, so typical, so uh, a typical element uh, looks like this. I don't know, just uh, three plus two v one minus four v three. Let's say v one, v two, v three. Da da da. Are uh, they form a basis of this? I don't know, 2i two, two minus 2, I don't know. Doesn't matter, you know. Something like that. It looks like that. This combination of all possible ways to combine them using tensors. And this, we, we may have a uh, constant term like that coming from this. Of course, it has to be a finite. It's not a kind of series. It's not a series. Okay, to make it really finite, let's uh, stop here. Okay. Uh, and this is just a vector space. We want this to be an algebra. So the multiplication is defined naturally. Multiplication on TV is defined by this natural this is a thing that you can imagine. You are, how can we multiply this with, we only need to consider this basis element. So say W1 dot 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 WS. Just make it as a tensor. Very easy. This is still an element there, so completely fine. And of course, and extend by uh, extending extending it linearly. We only define this for basis element, but we can extend it linearly, then it will be a well-defined map. 
And because of this, uh, it's an associative algebra. We have associative law. And of course, uh, then TV is an associative algebra with identity. What is the identity? One. One is the identity. One is, of course, a complex number. It is indeed inside TV because it's here. If you multiply one to any tensor, it's just one. Of course, mm, multi do we have to say this? Uh, actually, no, 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 it's not. This is by definition. This is kind of a definition. Yes. Anyway. All right. Okay. So we have an associative algebra, but for to construct this, we will quotient this by some idea. All right. Um, Oh, by the way, if J is a map, min linear map from A to some algebra, if this is a linear map where A is an associative algebra with identity, say one, then it extends naturally to an algebra homomorphism V from the tensor algebra to A. How? How can you do that? You can naturally define this to be U1 dot 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 UR. Because now these are elements in A, we can multiply them. There is the multiplication structure, so we just multiply them. This is a well-defined uh, algebra homomorphism. So it naturally extends. Okay. Um, so now we are ready to define UG. So now let G be a Lie algebra. Then we define UG by this quotient tensor algebra quotient by some ideal J, where J is the two-sided ideal of TG generated by this set, X tensor Y, Y tensor X, X y, x, y in g. OK. First of all, g is a Lie algebra. It's a vector space. So we can talk about the tensor algebra. So here, we don't really use any uh, Lie algebra structure. We only need, it. We only need a, a vector space structure. So we define this. Um, algebra, tensor algebra, coming from this vector space. We quotient this by some idea, two-sided idea generated by this. So in some sense, this is like we have this tensor algebra, and we just force that this uh, is equal to this. That's what uh, this uh, quotient does. So in other words, UG is the basically the algebra, tensor algebra TG, where we identify this bracket. We just say that, OK, we want this to be uh, this. We just declare that this is equal to that. How can you do that? By quotient, by uh, taking the quotient this by the ideal. Because 
This means whenever there is an element in this idea, it will be considered to be zero. So this is considered to be zero. That means if you move this to the other side, we get this. So somehow it's, we just give the relation like that. Okay, this is the relation we want. And note that, so what, what does this look like? Note that elements in G, J are of the form of the form of in this form. So finite sum, after all, it is an ele element in Tg. So alpha j, xj, yj. Because it's two-sided idea, we have something like that. J. Of course, alpha j, beta j, they are uh, arbitrary element in the tensor algebra. And x, i, or x, j, y, j, they are elements in G. So it's generated by this. So whenever we uh, take multiply something on its left or something on its right, we must get an, another element in J. So J element in J uh, look, looks like this, it's typical. Uh, So this is the construction of this algebra. But of course, we have to show that this indeed satisfies the three conditions for an, uh, to be this universal enveloping algebra. That's what we are going to do. But the construction is like that. So in some sense, I think construction is quite um, natural. We just construct the tensor algebra, and then we just declare that we will have this condition. It's pretty uh, simple-minded, I guess. But it does work, so we can prove that it is a universal enveloping algebra. So the claim, or well, this will be the proof of the uh, theorem that I uh, stated. UG is universal enveloping uh, algebra. Enveloping algebra of G, with of course what is the map I? We have a natural map sending this to just X. X X is already here, right? It's it's really like a, it's really an embedding. But of course, you know, more, more precisely or more precisely, because this is not really a tensor algebra, or quotient of this, so it's kind of the representative of the uh, quotient. More precisely, uh, since this is the tensor algebra quotient J, so Ix should be written in this way, x plus J. Like because it's question, but we will simply write. But, we, but you know, we we know that we are working uh, with this quotient, so we will simply, but we will simply write x uh, instead of uh, x plus j. Or sometimes it's common to write a representative like that. So class is kind of a class. <clears throat> so to to prove this, we have to sh check the three things, the three conditions. Okay. What is the first condition? For all x, y in G, uh, we want to know whether i 
x comma y is equal to x y. Or we want to know whether this is equal to i x i y minus i y i x, right? But what is this? This is just x comma y. It's just now in, inside uh, u, u g. This is what x y minus y x, right? In g, right? This is now in u g. But are they equal? Yes, because in G, they are equal by definition. So, yes, this is clearly true. Very simple. Uh, but of course, yeah, I, have to, I have to write this a little more carefully. X tensor Y, this is X tensor Y, to be uh, very precise. Yes. They are equal. Because the multiplication here means tensor product. OK, uh, UG is generated by IX. Is this generated by this? The answer is yes. Yes. Because TG is generated by this, right? Because TG is obtained from, um, can be constructed by combining all of this, by tensoring things. So already TG is generated by this, and UG is a quotient of TG, so it contains every, this will generate this. It already generates this thing, so it generates the whole thing. So one and two uh, simple, just by uh, definition of this UG. The third one uh, is more interesting. So we need to show that it satisfies this kind of commuting diagram stuff. So suppose. Um, Okay. Yeah, just to uh, explain things in just one page, I'm going to start over with the next page. So suppose uh, J, so associative algebra, satisfies the relation. then we can extend. I told you uh, briefly, in two slides away, whenever we have a linear map, we can extend it naturally to the tensor product, tensor uh, algebra. So we will first extend it to tensor algebra. We can extend uh, this map to this map from the tensor algebra to A by this, this rule. U1 tensor dot 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 UR JU1 dot 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 JUR and then of course extended the map linearly then we get a map from TG to A. But this is not a map that we wanted. We want a map from UG to A, not from TG. But we have this, but can we construct a map from UG from this? Does this naturally induce a map like that? Notice that this is TG quotient J. So whenever we have a map, this map naturally induce a map, this quotient by any idea uh, contained in the corner of this map. So if we can show that this J is in fact uh, contained in the corner of this pi, then we know that it induces this map. So that's uh, our uh, strategy. So and in fact, that's not difficult. 
the two-sided idea J is contained, you can see this immediately, in the kernel of, of phi for this. Let's write this uh, like that, just to, to distinguish. Because uh, the typical element of this uh, is like this. I uh, wrote something like this. X L Y L Y L X L. A typical element looks like this. But what is that? It's a linear map, so it's so one. Uh, it goes like that, and this applies this. So J X L J Y L minus J Y L J X L minus J. If you look at this part, this inside this tensor, we don't care about this. We see everything that contains this vanishes. This is zero, so the whole sum will be zero. Therefore, we get an induced map <coughs> phi, let's say this. But uh, what, what about this? Do we have this net uh, desired property? This is equal to this. And this is equal to J. Uh, here is a, OK, maybe uh, this is x. So this is equal to this. So that's the uh, end of the proof. Uh, so this J uh, is this map. This I is uh, this. Okay. So this is inside. Uh, so okay. So this is inside U G, but. This is induced. This is induced from this map, so we can say this is equal to this, and this uh, is just a definition. So it does set have uh, the desired property. Is everything okay? And we use this fact to show that this part is zero. So yeah, this is the universal enveloping algebra. It's an associative algebra that contains this uh, Lie algebra G. And it's embedded naturally there. And we, we can express this bracket as a commutator. OK, uh, the next proposition. This is uh, quite nice. Suppose that we have a representation. So it's a representation of a Lie algebra G. It's maybe an uh, infinite dimensional, infinite dimensional. So in the previous theorem, we, we, in G could be infinite dimensional as well. Then there exists a unique algebra homomorphism 
uh, pi tilde from u g and uh, endomorphism of v such that the identity is get sent to the identity. Of course, the identity is uh, usually denoted i, and pi tilde x is equal to pi x for all x in G. Of course, G is con contained in U G. So, in other words, whenever we have a representation of G, it naturally extends to a rep uh, algebra homomorphism of U G, universal enveloping algebra. In other words, There is a nice one-to-one uh, -one correspondence between representations of G, one-to-one, -one, representations of the algebra, UG. Okay, so what is the representation of this? By uh, representation of this, I just mean that uh, algebra homomorphism from UG to some uh, endomorphism of a vector space. Because, you know, after all, this representation is really uh, algebra homomorphism uh, from G to so real algebra homomorphism. The here is algebra because it's not a real algebra. There's associative algebra. So whenever we have this, we can construct this. And if we have a representation of this, then just by restricting it to G, we get a representation of G. So let's prove this. So proof G, uh, we have a, this, because U, UG is a universal enveloping algebra. We have this map I and UG. And we have endomorphism. Endomorphism is an associative algebra. We have a map from pi to uh, U, G to endomorphism of V. But this, if I write this like J, then it, it is the map J in the condition 3. Because um, this map pi uh, we, we write this A. This is an uh, algebra algebra homomorphism satisfying the condition. Was it one or two? Two. Because that condition is this. That condition is this. But why is this true? That's what our representation is, right? The representation means it satisfies that. So we have this. So by the uh, definition of the universal enveloping algebra, we must have a unique map of phi so that it uh, diagram commutes. But this, let's write, uh, just say that this is this. Then it. It is an algebra homomorphism, and because it's com it commutes, uh, this is true. Pi star x, why is this true? Why is this true? Because this is, uh, this is, let's say this is pi star. Pi star i x, this is the same as pi star i x, because x is in G, but this, uh, by this commuting diagram, if you go this, this, then this is equal to this. So it's really an uh, immediate consequence of uh, the property of the universal enveloping algebra. So representation of G is the same thing as a representation of the, its universal enveloping algebra. Okay, so we constructed this universal enveloping algebra, but uh, 
we must prove a very important property of this universal enveloping algebra if you really want to do something with it. That's a very uh, this famous theorem called Poincaré Birkhoff Birkhoff Witt theorem. It's called that, or PBW theorem. It says the following: G finite dimensional uh, Lie algebra with basis uh, x1 dot 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 xk, say. Then the element of the form uh, i x1 n1 dot 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 i x k n k where these exponents are non-negative integers. These elements, they form a basis for UG. So it's basically a structure, it tells us the structure of this UG. We know exactly, and we, we can say that this is a basis. Because, uh, if you remember, uh, uh, we wanted to Im really embed this G inside an associative algebra so that bracket becomes commutative, a commutation, a commu commutator. But we know that this bracket becomes a commutator, but we have not really checked yet whether this is really an embedding. But this theorem tells us that it is indeed an embedding. So in particular, i x1 dot 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 i x k, these, these are a part of the basis here. So these are linearly independent. Independent. That means i, this is injective or embedding, injection, or embedding. So G is really uh, inside this, sitting inside this. You know, this is definitely true. This is definitely true. It's just copy of G is there, but this is not, uh, at all, not at all clear because we quotient this by J, so we don't know this is really an injection. But this theorem says that it is indeed an injection, even though we quotient this by uh, quite a big idea. Uh, so because it's an injection, we, we, we will simply now x instead of ix all the time. We know now it's an embedding, so. So how can we prove this PBW theorem? This is quite a long, like, it spans like, I don't know, five pages in this textbook. So I, I'm not going to go over the details, but let me tell you the idea of the proof. The idea, the proof is quite interesting. It is quite uh, combinatorial, I would say. Uh, let me talk about, talk a little bit about the proof. Not the details, but just the idea. So it's, it, it is the whole section on 9.4, proof of the PBW theorem. Oh, by the way, we need to show that this is a basis. So how, in order to show that some collection of vectors is a basis, we have to prove two things. It spans the whole vector space, and they are uh, linearly independent. Spanning is, uh, is not difficult. We know that this spans this. I mean, you can prove this easily using reordering lemma, if you remember. After all, this will be spanned by uh, any 
if, if, if you don't fix the uh, indices, this will definitely, so for instance, if I say, okay, J1, JK, this will definitely uh, span this because this is just, because this will span T, right? The tensor algebra is spanned by these elements. But the problem is we somehow fix this order and then we want the elements always in this order, weekly or increasing order. So if some things are out of order, but using the reordering lemma, this bracket uh, notation actually tells, uh, uh, allows us to kind of uh, switch the order. So we can always make everything in this as a linear combination of this. We, actually, we have done this uh, before using reordering lemma. So it's not that difficult. So proving, oh, by the way, uh, first uh, we will uh, rewrite this uh, element in the following form. We need, uh, we will write, we write in this way, I, X, J, 1, instead of the, instead of keeping the uh, exponents, we will just say that uh, J1, J, uh, N, where D is the dimension of G. We, and then we need to show, of course, X, J, J's are inside a G. We need to show that these uh, span U, G and uh, linearly independent to show that they form a basis. But this one is easy. This part is easy or relatively easy by uh, using reordering lemma. And this part is, uh, is kind of lengthy. This is, uh, or it's a long, long proof, I would say. But the idea is, uh, the idea is quite simple. Um, and quite interesting idea. Let's take any uh, vector space, infinite dimensional vector space with basis I just, we just index the basis like this, j1 dot 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 jn, where n is uh, non-negative integers, j, j's are uh, weakly decreasing or weakly increasing order. So for each of these, each of these indices, uh, for any, uh, this kind of n tuple of indices, we just say there is a uh, there is a um, basis element like that. So by definition, these these are linearly independent. We just constructed a vector space like that. It's always possible, you know, just infinite dimensional vector space. And our goal is construct a linear map, say gamma from U G to V such that gamma of I X J one dot 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 I X J N is V uh, J one dot 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 J N, right? Suppose that we constructed such a linear map, then they have to be linearly independent. Because if we have a uh, uh, linear independence here, it will, it will be translated to a linear independence of these vectors. But they are linearly independent by, by, by definition. They are just completely linear by definition. So if you construct such a map, then we will be done. Is that okay? But uh, it's not easy to construct directly, so to this end, we will find, instead of a map from this, we will find a map, of course, linear map, delta, from the tensor algebra to V, such that. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm uh, 
now omitting the tensors for simplicity and J restricted to uh, this ideal J of this map restricted to J is zero. That means this ideal is inside, uh, is contained in the kernel of phi, uh, of uh, delta. That means this will naturally induce a map gamma. And that it will be done. If we can construct such a map delta, then we have a map gamma, so we are done. That's the idea. And how can we do that? But this condition, by the way, uh, of course, for, for this, for this, these indices. This is the uh, important condition. This means, and you know, this, this means that uh, delta satisfies the star condition, where star is delta, say, x j1 dot 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 x j k, x j k plus 1 dot 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 x j n minus. I'll, I'm going to switch these two, only these two, keeping the remaining uh, unchanged. This, we want this to be equal to okay. for all uh, elements x, xj is in, uh, in g. So we will construct a map delta satisfying this. But how can we do that? So we construct delta uh, by induction on the monomials. Uh, so n, induction on n, double induction. n is the, we say that it's degree of this x j1 dot 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 x j n meaning the number of uh, factors in our tensor, tensor. And it's double induction. And what we call uh, P is, uh, is called the uh, index of this monomial or tensor. Or by definition, this index means number of pairs, say L comma K, that are out of order, out, out of order. Or in other words, number of L pairs, L comma K, such that L is less than K, but JL is greater than JK. So we want these indices to be weakly decreasing, weakly increasing, but if we have some kind of indices out of order, we will call that a, a P will be, the index meaning, Index is the number of pairs out of order, like that. And in fact, we can use we can use this uh, condition star uh, to define delta, the map delta, by saying that because this has to be uh, true, we define this to be this plus this like that. We can just define it like that. But the problem is consistency. Sometimes because this, we can ex exchange anything and then we have to have this relation. We could have had another uh, consecutive pairs. We could have exchanged that and another one over there. They must agree. So we have to show that. And the cru so the crucial part of the proof 
of the con uh, construction is to show that uh, this is well defined. This is well defined. For example, uh, suppose that we have x3, x2, x1. So uh, by the way, uh, this is induction on the num number of pairs out of order. So if there is something that's out of order, we exchange that. And then it, is, it will be defined over here. So we, we, this can also be defined. Because here, the number of in, uh, degree is decreased. So this will be defined if, you, if these two are out of order. Here, they are in order. So this will be defined by induction. So this kind of gives us a way to define this term. But the problem, like I said, is we don't know whether this is a well-defined map because there are many ways to construct this. So the crucial part is to show this. So for instance, we can, uh, this, we define, declare that this, we exchange these two. So x2, x3, x1, plus, and then bracket of these. We declare that this is equal to this. But this must also be equal to uh, the same thing we, uh, we use this, prop, uh, this pair. This must also equal to this. If this is not true, then the, the definition uh, doesn't work. We want to know whether these two agree. We have to check these to agree. They must equal. Otherwise, it's not, a, it's not well defined. But we can do that. We can check. And the here is the important part by using uh, the Jacobi identity. So the Jacobi identity of the uh, you know, if you remember, Jacobi identity is like that. We have to really have to use this because otherwise it doesn't work. So far, we haven't used this Jacobi identity, but it is used to prove that they have to be equal. So it's kind of a lengthy computation, but after all, uh, after all of this computation, you can check that they are equal. And in general, uh, we can show that this definition is well defined. So that's the end of the proof, basically. That's the idea of the proof. So for the details, uh, if you want the detail, uh, you can read the textbook. Or the author of the book, he, uh, uh, he has some PDF in his web page, which is uh, an updated version of section 9.4. So hopefully, that will be uh, easier to read. So if you are interested, you can look at uh, his web page and download the PDF for the new section, newly updated section. Any question? Mm, so, so where are we now? So we have. So our goal was to. Our goal was. Was to construct, say, uh, irreducible representation of a semi-simple Lie algebra G with uh, highest weight mu. But we are not there yet. We are, but maybe we are halfway there. Um, so to do that, we need to, if you remember, we will construct a Boma module um, I, I don't remember if you write this V or not. So we will construct a Verma module, and this will be quotient of. This will be a quotient of. I'm sorry. Okay, Verma module, which we haven't learned yet. Verma module, say V mu, and this will be a quotient of UG, the universal enveloping algebra. 
So we, this will, we will learn this later, uh, next, uh, next week. And you know, UG is, uh, is a quotient of TG. So we are kind of, we have to quotient one, twice, and three times. So after doing three quotients, then you, we will get this irreducible representation at the end. So that's the topic. Varma module will be the topic for the next next week. Okay, uh, I will stop here. Uh, see you next week. <laughs>